Are you? Hi. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. And you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I'm doing good. Oh. Yeah, so... Yeah, whenever you're ready. Yeah. Yeah, let me share my screen. Mm hmm Mm. Mm. We have a uh, another another guest. Oh, he's, interesting! <laughs> yeah, he's out. So yeah, whenever oh. you're ready, yeah, just share the screenshot. You see my screen, right? Yeah, I can see your screen. Yeah. So the chapter it's 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 quite long. So I I don't know. I think if we are not able to complete, then maybe the rest we could just read it by ourselves. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, it's it's quite long. So we we yeah. we are starting broadcast broadcasting. I think we stopped. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, we have yeah. to start here. Yes. Yeah. So so he he's saying that we wanna do something like this, like the array, the array uh numpy array we created previously, and mm -hmm. we wanna. Sort of subtract the mean from it. We want to demean it uh, mm -hmm. at uh, like one, which is the axis one at uh, mm. at the column uh, level. It will mm. will get this error. Um, so so according to the broadcasting rule, the the the, the broadcast dimension must be one mm. in the in the smaller array. So it must be one in the smaller array. So mm -hmm. that's why we 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 have in this uh here. So uh in the example of uh row demeaning shown here, uh this means the reshaping means reshaping the uh, uh to be shaped uh um four by one instead of just mm -hmm. four. So then if we do that, then we will not have any error. error. Yeah. So in the three-dimensional case, it's just the extension of the two-dimensional case. Hmm. So in the three-dimensional case, uh, broadcasting over any of the three dimensions, it's only a way. It's only a matter of reshaping the data uh, to be shape compatible. So in any case, if we want to uh, uh, do the broadcasting over any dimension, the 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 the, the, the there must be compatibility, sort of. 
So it yeah. gives an example. This is the full array, which is mm -hmm. a a three a three D array, mm -hmm. uh, a three D array, and uh, of diamonds on eight, five, and and three, like this. And and if we want to uh, broadcast on axis zero, so you 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 realize it, it the length of it should be one or smaller. So we just it's one, and then the rest are the remaining uh, coordinates for those axes mm. and this is how the, the the reshaping should be because that's that's how the reshaping should be for it to be able to broadcast at, at axis zero and that mm -hmm. is the case for if you want to broadcast at axis one then the the yeah. the dimension for one for that axis will be one and also for if you want to die if you want to do broadcast at axis two the dimension has to change to, to one, something like this. I don't know if what I'm saying makes any sense. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what I think that it what it says is maybe assuming yeah. that this one is kind of an X mm -hmm. and this is a kind of a Y, and yeah. then when we say this is kind of Z, yeah, so it's just three dimensional. So maybe X is zero means we actually taking the Based on the based on the this x axis, and then we only take the this one kind of a three array column for yeah. that, because uh, up up here you actually said that the the broadcasting broadcasting array should be one one right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, at the top, right? Yeah, it's, the it's the dimension. Yeah, yeah. So so that's the reason why it has a kind of a always. One one for x axis, uh -huh. and when we say the one is is the actual indicator about the indexing for the y, and then a uh, z gonna two gonna be the z x axis for the you know for the those the the broadcasting things. So so this one gonna be the axis two. So it's a z. So it's a kind of a Based on the based on up to the top is a one two three etc. Right? Mm -hmm. Maybe one two three. I mean, because uh, it has a uh, three, uh, three kind of a uh, array in the z axis. So, in case of the axis two, we only take the first one, right? Mm -hmm. And then first one of the z based on the z axis, and then second this number one, one is a y axis. So here, so um. Uh, um, not not this one. Like uh, like uh, from this this array, right? This, oh. right? And then this this one gonna be one and two, three, etc. And five, right? For five, and then we only take the one for this. Based on the this axis one, like a y, y kind of a. Axis, oh. and then Z is kind of like a, this one is actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It is actually eight kind of a X axis. So we only take the this one based on the this indexing number. That is the axis zero. We mean. You understand what I mean? Yeah, so, it's it's it, the whole thing. It's abstract, uh, so that's I I understand the concept, but because it's yeah. abstract, so the visualization was not still very. Yeah, helpful. it's not the uh, yeah straightforward because it's the three dimensional, so it's a very complicated. Yeah. And, you know, you have to think about the three dimensional way of the looking at the array. So, but I'm not sure this is the quite useful when we try to do the data analysis. Because yeah. uh, it, this yeah. is a just kind of a three dimensional kind of a data set, but we we usually have a kind of a two dimensional kind of a table type of the data set we usually look at right yeah maybe maybe in this case maybe three dimensional means maybe x axis gonna be maybe in the one independent variable and then a y gonna be maybe outcome or maybe Z gonna be the maybe time kind of thing or maybe G gonna be the outcome or why gonna be the time kind of a concept? So sometimes it is quite useful. Maybe if you have a, a some some set of the set of the arrays, 
like this, like you have a multiple arrays stacking up with the same uh, same measure, like a, like a X and Y or kind of thing, and then a Z also has the has the thing for the stacking up for the multi array multi array. So mm -hmm. in that case, maybe it might be possible because, uh, like uh, for example, there is a kind of a kind of a matrices for the X and Y matrices coming up like this, and then Z gonna be the maybe we can just repeatedly measure in X and Y for the time mm -hmm. over the time Z. That might be the possible way we can actually setting up the, this kind of a three dimensional array, but I'm not sure how many data, what kind of a data example we can thinking about for these three arrays. So yeah, that's my yeah, question. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, because it it uh, sorry we didn't give a real world example data scenario, yeah. so which makes it yeah. much more abstract. Yeah, which makes it. More yeah, I know that. I understand that two dimensional. It will be very very possible to see that but three dimensional is uh yeah i don't yeah. think we there is a uh, some of the good data example that deals with the this three dimensional array but anyway this is how it works so we just say okay so how it works <laughs> so yeah <laughs> yeah so okay. um so he's still yeah sorry no 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 go ahead go ahead yeah, so he's still uh, talking about this uh, broadcasting, and you noticed previously we 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 add uh, some kind of a new um um we for the compatibility we 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 add a, a like a, a column or something like this for for them to be compatible. Uh, a common problem there is needing to add a new exist specifically for broadcasting purposes. And then we'll have to use the reshape to reshape it. So now he's saying that there is this function uh, called NP new axis, which is quite handy. And we could use this wherein we will not have to uh, be using the reshape option and then mm. inside new axis. So we can just use the NP new axis and then that does all that automatically. So it gives an example. We create this array, uh, mm. uh, a four by four of zeros, mm -hmm. and then we uh, uh, create another array, mm -hmm. but now this new array we are creating, we want to uh, do the uh, broadcasting at the, uh, the axis one. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why we have this new axis at the middle. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so you can see the shape of the new array. It's like mm -hmm. a 3D, mm -hmm. yeah. It's like a three. So, yeah. so it's it seems like uh, we have a kind mm -hmm. of a like a, I would say four by one by four. It means uh maybe four in this case, mm -hmm. and then one in this case, and then four like this. Mm. Yeah like this and then we have a four by four like this and then all all these are zero in it like this that's the kind of thing so just kind of a one slice block with a with a broadcasting with a four by one, one like this here, this is one, and then and then four in the Z, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, I guess, so. So like uh, uh, when we uh, create this, uh, it, uh, you, you could see the, 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 mm. the, 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 the dimension. And now mm. we could uh, broadcast it with the original array we created and mm. we'll get the new uh, array we want. Mm. Uh, mm. So it's, uh, he's given the same example also with uh, like the, the normal distribution, if we uh, the mm. standard normal and mm -hmm. he could uh, apply the same thing. And yeah. 
Yeah, basically, it's, uh, it's just. So mm -hmm. this is uh, must be the kind of a three, three by one kind of array. So it is actually like this, right? Yeah. We, yeah. We, um. Yeah. 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 Three by one. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of one column, right? Yeah. Yeah. One column. Yeah. Hmm. And then this one is a one by three for the for the those things. Yeah, yeah, so but but, then... but you could see the dam you, you could see here we did the, mm -hmm. in the first case we did the broadcasting at uh, axis one. That's why we mm -hmm. have like uh uh three by one. And yeah. now we are doing the broadcasting at axis zero and we are having like a, um yeah. um a three by one by one by, one by three. three. Yeah, so yeah. so so depending on where we do broadcasting. The mm. determines the, the shape of the output, something like that. Mm, okay. This three dimension is quite complicated. <laughs> yeah. So it's okay. like those if we uh, had a three dimensional array and wanted to demean access to, we would need to write uh, something like this. Yeah. So I think I, I think I, yeah. So we'll, we'll write something like this. I don't know. I think I have the codes here, yeah. Just to visualize them. Uh, yeah. So that's the mean at uh, at zero, something like this. Mm. Uh, and, mm. Maybe you can score, yeah, that one here. Here it is. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. If you have and a then, dimension, so yeah. we. Yeah. And then so, you have a yeah. mean for the the second one, like a Z, like a five here. Yeah, for five. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's the uh, that's the output. That is how it looks. Yeah. Some by and three shape, by four. Yeah, the shape yeah. is a, a three by four matrix. Yeah. So if we want to demean now, is the the original uh, array, which is this minus uh uh this mm. but because we are uh we are broadcasting at the mm -hmm. at five yeah that's why we have the new axis at the end yeah so the new output uh we're gonna have it's like uh mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay maybe let me type shape and see the shape of it mm. yeah it is uh, yeah it is also same three by four because uh, that actually four? in here yeah mm. this one is a three by four by one and then i think it should yeah. Be. yeah yeah it's a three by four yeah 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 yeah, yeah, it, yeah it, it was a yeah. bit uh yeah. okay no 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 go ahead yeah yeah so so basically this is what it was trying to explain here yeah mm. And then he okay. says now that you know this could be so tedious, and we could uh, write a function for this. And then mm. it's easier when we decide to write a function to do this, since it's uh, very tedious and repetitive. So a, a, a typical function could be something like this. And uh, definition of the function: the inputs are the 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 array itself, the NumPy array, and the axis. Here we could specify the axis. This function is taking default at axis zero, but we could. Uh, uh, make it axis one, axis two. That is depending on the dimensions we have, and it. Uh, so and we set mean equals to the the mean of the array at the at the given axis. So this, this generalizes generalizes things like uh, uh, this uh, to n dimensions. So mm. basically, that is what this uh, function is doing, and it it's uh, it's much. Uh, so it returns uh, the, the mean. At n dimensions, so depending mm. on how much dimensions we want, so which is mm. uh, much more uh, nicer to work with. Mm, okay. So now he he's he's a, uh, still on this uh, uh, broadcasting thing, and uh, he looks at uh, how to uh, um, so in this simple case uh, we could see we create a uh, an array of zeros with dimension four by three. Mm -hmm. 
and then we convert all the values to fives and we have something like this. Mm. Yeah, so now, however, if uh, we had a one dimensional array of values we wanted to set into the columns of the array, we can do that as long as the shapes are compatible. So, so basically, in anything that we want to do with broadcasting, the, 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 there, there must be compatibility with the, with the columns and, and stuff like this. Mm. So now we create this uh, array with a column with uh, yeah, a one by four. Mm. Yeah, so a one by four. And this original array we created, we set it to this. Mm. And now we are doing the broadcasting at the at the first axis hmm. instead of axis zero at axis one. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Yeah. So, it's so then we, we have by, this four by one. Yeah. So it, it just repeats each of these values, each of yeah. these values it fits them like three times. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. So we can change the first two values mm -hmm. like this. So the first two values in this array, we can change them yeah. to this, uh, and that's uh, that's here mm. by just saying indexing from. If we don't indicate the zero, it means we are indexing from the start. So from zero to two, mm. which is the first two values of this uh, this array, and mm. that is how that looks like. Yeah, that's the end of broadcasting. In case if you have any 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 comments or. No, 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 not any comment. Actually, broadcasting is a quite complicated, but yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah, it's okay. Yeah, just go ahead. So, so now he, he moves on to universal uh, advanced universal functions. Um, so I I really don't get why we need these universal functions. Uh, but he he he's trying to explain it. Uh, but overall, I don't see how useful this could be. Uh, anyways. So the u font, which is like the universal functions, uh, a number of additional features occasionally can occasionally can help you write more concise code without explicit loops. So basically, it's a way you can write code where you can avoid doing some loopings here and there for for loops and while loops. So u funct instance methods. Uh, each of NumPy's binary u uh has special methods for performing certain kinds of special vectorized uh, operations. So in the table, he gives you the, 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 the functions and the type of operations they do. Like here, the accumulate function, accumulates values, preserving uh, all partial aggregates, and then you, the at, and then you have the reduce, the reduce at, and the, the outer. So these are all, so he gives you examples of how this works. Uh, really, maybe we can just look at one or two of them and and move. So he, he starts with the reduce method, uh, which uh, takes uh, a single array and aggregates its values okay, along uh, optionally along an axis. So it's similar to the add, some 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 kind of like that. So we have this mm -hmm. array, a range from uh, a range of ten, like zero from zero to nine. So uh, then if we call the uh, numpy dot add dot reduce, it, it gives us 45. So basically it sums it up. It gives us a cumulative, it's, it's some kind of similar to the cumulative sum. Yeah, so this, uh, this add reduce and the sum are almost all the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So now he's also showing us a last uh, uh, mundane example. Uh, we can use the numpy dot uh, logical and the logical and to check whether the values in each uh, row uh, of uh, an area has what happened. Yeah. So I think I tried to, because it was confusing, I tried to run it. So this. Uh, yeah, so it sorts you know, like if we call the sort one, it uh, um, sorts. Uh, hmm. Yeah. 
yeah so it first uh, he first sorts it he first sorts the, the data and then this uh if we if we run this command it uh it this drops the last column mm -hmm. so uh, when we when we call this when we call the array uh minus one it drops the last column now instead of it being a instead of it being a five by five it ends up being like a, a five by four it, this one drops the last and this code drops the force the force column so if we use the logical operator to check uh whether this array is less than whether this array is less than this other one uh we could see the the, the results. So what he is saying now is we can do this manually, or we could use the NP logical and reduce command to do it. And, and and that one we have the possibility of setting choosing the axis we want the operation to be done. So here if we set the operation at axis one, it gives us this column, which is this. Hmm. I, I don't know if <laughs> this this makes any sense. But but it's okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, so basically he's saying that this could be done manually, or we could just use the NP logical and and NP the, the NP dot logical and dot reduce function on this and it, it will give us and then we set the axis we want the operation to be done at. Yeah. So uh, so the, 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 the accumulate function is also very similar to the uh, reuse function, just like the cumulative sum and the sum are uh, very close to each other. Um, yeah, I, I think these are some of the the, the 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 new function methods that we have. So basically, uh, this is what they each of them do. And the, the outer, like x, y, applies operations to all pairs of elements, x and y. The resulting array has a shape. So the, 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 the shape of the resulting array will be the shape of x plus the shape of y. And so here also we could write a uh, new Python, new NumPy, uh, write a new U funks in uh, Python. We could uh, also write new U functions. Uh, so we can use this uh, method, the NumPy dot from PyFunk accept, accepts a, a Python function along with a specification for the number of inputs and outputs. So this is an example. For example, a simple function that adds elements wise would be specified as. So th that's the name of our function, the uh, add elements. And it takes two arguments, the x and y, and it returns the sum. So then uh, add them will be equal, will be set to numpy from python that's that numpy numpy from python function which takes this function we have built and uh, uh, gives it the arguments set x to two and y to one mm, so the uh, so if we call this i add them to these two arrays um, it adds them uh, So it adds it it adds the the respective values, right? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. So it adds zero and zero, which is two, one and one, zero and zero, which is zero, one and one, two, two and two, four, three and three, six. So stuff like that. That is what it does. Mm. Yeah. And then the data type will be an object. So now he's saying that if we use this. Uh, um, from a Pi function, it only returns a Python object. 
which might not, sometimes we might not want our output to be a Python object. So then we have the option of using the NumPy vectorize that allows you to specify the output type. So so mm. so so we could use this other method, the NumPy vectorize, which would, which will allow us to uh, choose the the data type or the type of output. So uh, this is an example. So the add them, we call the NumPy np vectorize method and set the mm. type to object type to to a float 64 and mm. then it returns us a float 64. Mm. so the, the the downside with this u functions is they are very slow compared to um um so these functions provide a way to create u function u funks like functions but they are very slow because they require a python function call to compute each element which is a lot slower than the uh, the numpy c based uh, u function mm. so uh, so this uh like this uh, using this method is com is slower than using the build uh, the 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 Okay, so yeah, this is the example. So we can use this add them method, which relies on this, uh, let's say from pi function or the vectorized function. It's, mm. uh, let's say it's, it's uh, slower compared to using the built-in numpy, which is the add numpy function. Mm. Yeah, so it's not very efficient. Basically, that's what it's trying to tell us. And it, it, it sort of takes a lot of memory. So it's better to use the built-in, uh, let's say numpy add. Hmm. So now next it moves to the next part, it's the structured and uh, recorded eyes. I, I think I wrote something on this. So it's structured uh, arrays in NumPy. So if you, last week we talked about uh, homogeneous and heterogeneous data types. So a uh, uh, standard NumPy array at uh, the ND array are uh, uh, homogeneous and can only contain elements of the same data type. We, we spoke about this uh, the last, last week. Whilst on the other hand, structured uh, arrays allowed for heterogeneous data type. So you should mix, uh, Floating with ints, with booleans, with uh, so enabling complex, which which in a uh, in a sense it's more convenient for us because if we are working with structured arrays, which are which allows for heterogeneous data type, then we could do complex structures similar to uh, SQL uh, or tables or C structures. So, uh, so we can create a. a a structured array by using the data B type and set it to uh, the particular type of data type we want. So uh, this is an example. We have the D type equals. So we have X. We set X to where X will be the first uh, uh, in, uh, the first value and Y will be the second value. So we set X to be uh, float 64 and we set Y to be int 32. And we have our array, and then we set the data equal to data type. So then you see now this is a, a kind of a structured, uh, a structured array, which is mm. uh, heterogeneous. So the advantage is support for fields within multiple name elements. So uh, I think of it as very similar to a maybe a dic is it a dictionary or. Uh, yeah, like a dictionary sort of. Hmm. So uh, if we want to access a particular field, it returns a view of the data and not a copy, which is like useful for, which is somehow more efficient when we are manipulating data. And then he talks about why we want to use uh, structured arrays. They are efficient uh, for writing and reading data 
and they're useful for interfacing with uh, C and C C plus C plus plus codes, and allows uh, uh, it allows us to have a, a detailed control of memory. In a sense, it doesn't use a lot of memory. And and it's also useful for specific binary data manipulation and uh, serialization tasks. So the, the whole thing was getting a lot. So I thought that you know let me just summarize the key points there. So the next part was it went uh, into yeah I think uh, we, we we could look at uh, so yeah this uh, I had already mentioned about this and then the field name he he's talking about something like this uh, yeah he also mentions about nested uh, data types and yeah but I don't think that's bigger of and and then why do we use that yeah don't. Mm. Huh. Yeah, if you if you have any comments up to now. No, not I don't have any comments right now. Yeah. So now he looks at uh uh um more about sorting in NumPy, like sorting. I I, I think we've seen sorting previously. So NumPy provides a uh, efficient uh uh ways to sort arrays, similar to Python built in list uh, sorting. Uh, so uh, we we could see examples like this when we create this array and we call this sort, and it it arranges it basically in the uh, sort of ascending order. That is what it does. So basically, the sort function arranges in ascending order. So the numpy dot short creates a new sorted copy of an array. Otherwise, it accepts the same argument such as kind uh, as in the array short method. Hmm. So the uh, in place sorting, the sort method for of numpy arrays rearranges the array content without creating a new array, thus modifying the original data. Uh, so sorting a view of an array will modify the original array um, since the view does not own the data. Uh, so, so sorting a specific column or row in place affects the original array structure. So this is an example when we have this, we sort and uh, basically it, uh, um, it rearranges the entire uh, data. So we can uh, create a new like shorting. Uh, so NumPy also allows creating a new array that is sorted. That is a shorted version of the original. Uh, keeping the original, no, I, I think I've mentioned this. What, okay. So we can also sort along a particular axis. It could be, we could sort along uh, the, the, the zero axis, which would be the, the the, the row and also the axis one, which will be the column. We could uh, sort according to that. So NumPy does not have a built-in option for descending order sorting. So, so basically the sorting in NumPy is always in ascending order. So if you want to do a uh, descending order sorting, then we have to use this, uh, something like this, which uh, will reverse the, 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 the order or something like that. So you 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 have some uh fun, some some methods that we can use for indirect sorting, which is the the arc sort and the leg sort. The arc sort returns an array of 
indices that sort the data, while the leg sort uh, sorts based on multiple keys. Useful for uh, sorting by uh, multiple columns or criteria. Yeah. So then it talks about the uh, partial sorting and and then it talks about the ag. Yeah, so the the partial sorting, it talks about that. So NumPy has a fast method to uh, which is the NumPy partition and the NumPy uh, like exit add partition for partitioning an array around the kit smallest element. Yeah, so if this is the array, so the if we call the NumPy uh, partition uh, a three, so it uh, sort of it uh, it partitions or divide the array at uh, around three, something like this. So it's, I, I think it's calling a bunch of, bunch of uh, stuff. So um, I don't know if you have read this part, but I haven't read this part of it. Maybe if you've read this part and you wanna share some stuff. I don't think we have to just, maybe let's skip that about the A7, cause A7 is, uh kind of like open source projects and then uh, he just uh, tried to explain something yeah, the about the extension yeah, yeah yeah i think that a6 will be fine so yeah 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 this sorry, one is, sorry, uh, sorry i can't yeah. i can't explain this talk clearly i i think it, i i was reading it but it was quite abstract for me so <laughs> sorry yeah maybe if you go up a little bit like uh yeah like uh, partition things, it is actually that one is a little bit important because in here but, partially sorting array. Yeah. So when when you say about the, this one is uh, uh, here, let me explain to you. Okay. When you say about the MP partition for the three, it actually say about the partitioning on array around the K, the smallest elements, right? Yeah, yeah. So that means that this one is actually K, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's a uh, it's the three. So every so what does this one does is kind of like a, in here. Uh, the first one, the first one is. Um, negative one point nine five two nine, and then, and then, and then the next one. Uh, here, the partitioning. One of the goal is to determine the largest and smallest elements of an array. NumPy has the best method for the partitioning. It is. Because it's a kind of a kind of a m kind of a clustering kind of method, but yeah, I think that that's the how, how it works. Yeah, it's a very very confusing things. I think that this seems like a k, right? Yeah, like yeah, that one. should be the, the three yeah. should be the k. Yeah. 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 So partitioning array around the k, the smallest elements. I'm not sure what exactly what does that mean. So, so I, I think it gives you all the 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 elements at the like the all the elements before the the Kate element. So what I thinking is uh, just okay, just check this uh check these elements because this is the original array, right? Yeah. And then uh, every Kate the smallest elements means among uh when when what Python does is uh, Python actually looking at the all of the these value. Okay, mm -hmm. and then, and then sorting. Yeah, yeah, it sorts, it sorts. Yeah, and then sorting smallest to largest. Yeah. That's the first one. And then maybe we can get the, that 
like uh, like like this minus one point nine five two nine negative one point four two three eight and negative one point three six seven three and then what the third one does is it actually try to listing listing the ever try to uh maybe let me explain this way so what what partition actually means is here is a what the k means is a whenever whenever we looking at the, this one first thing is that we have to do the uh three three smallest elements so which is the these three and then we take that out uh where yeah here and then next one is we looking at the t we looking at the the remainder of the elements and then find out the uh find out find out the the next the smallest elements this yeah. right and this and and this and then now now we we took out the six right yeah and then and then now we have a one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen among the fourteen elements we actually have we we try to extract another three elements has three smallest elements etc that's the mm. how it goes about the partitioning so uh so it uh, it 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 does the order in based on the kit uh yeah uh, uh, smallest element or oh, okay yeah yeah so yeah yeah that. yeah just looking at the all of these value element value value of the each elements mm -hmm. and then first the three first the three smallest elements gonna be taking out and then next one is the next the three elements and then uh next the three elements etc and mm -hmm. then our uh arc 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 partition this is also the pretty the same thing maybe this is a more like a more like a customizing version of the partitioning because uh, we just uh, try to try to extract the extract the every time we're gonna look every 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 iteration we're gonna try to looking at the every three smallest elements gonna be extracted for the app this is the first iteration, second iteration, third iteration, fourth iteration, etc. Okay. Yeah. Because we have a twenty value, right? So that means we have at least have a six iteration, and then two remainder. But anyway, we actually have a seven iteration. To to get the this partitioning and then I get the this smallest elements. I think that this one is a quite useful function because uh, when we try to sorting kind of things and then uh, maybe not, maybe small, not the smallest elements, maybe if we have uh, some kind of a criteria that we wanted to partitioning our array and then uh, transfer that array to the other kind of a data set, this might be the possible way we can do. And then and then yeah this partially short sorting is a quite useful kind of yeah so yeah yeah in here actually here after you call the partitioning this the first the three elements in the result are the smallest the three values with no particular order but this one is actually return the indices that we arranging to the equivalent order so actually yeah arc partition is based on the sort partially sorting based on the indexing number so that also sometimes very useful yeah yeah the indexes yeah mm. yeah so i think yeah i think that's kind of it so in this one is actually when we say about the ARR and then every three is the index is gonna be like a nine o six. I'm not sure why why it extract like this. 
return to the indices to that we arrange the data into the equivalent order. What does that mean by that? Uh, my 906 is going to be come first. Nine? No, no, I think, you know, this is the, the this one is the standard normal. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, uh, is it, I, I think the, the, this arc partition gives us like the, this, this uh, uh, NP partition, the, the, the various uh, random numbers that mm -hmm. uh, sort of generated this uh, standard normal. I, I don't know, something like this. Mm -hmm. So maybe the, the this uh, uh, minus one point nine five. This was the the the. Could you scroll number. down a little bit? Could you scroll yeah. down a little bit? Okay, here. Could you go up a little bit? Uh, nine is. So you could see nine is taken from uh, uh, this uh, minus one point nine. This is... Yeah. Take indices so take take function actually take the these indices the nine and then okay i don't know i yeah it's a very confusing because array is a very confusing because it's a matrix but there's a lot of a function python can do but yeah in this part is a, a little bit Tricky, yeah. yeah. But and and also, I'm not even sure. Maybe is there any chance to we actually work on the array a lot? Yeah, you because... could. But I think most of these things are done by NumPy methods that we don't like. Basically, you know, this chapter is giving us what is done at the background level, but mm. like we don't usually see this thing much often and how it works. So that's why okay. I think it's abstract because this chapter gives us how the yeah. actual functions work. And, okay. and, and like, like we just call the function, but like most of us don't actually know how it works, the mechanisms it does mm. uh, at the background level. So that's why the chapter, it's very abstract. Mm. 